This is the Vance Kirkland dot painting demo. First, I did a basic drawing to get all of my ideas out on paper. I decided to go with a warm color scheme with a flame effect, gray background. Go ahead and open up the Google Drawing link that was sent to you in the classroom so I can show you some of the tools. Up at the top of the toolbar, there is a circle and square symbol. Select the rectangle, scan over the entire document, it'll come up blue, and change it to the background color that you want by clicking on the paint bucket. I decided to go with a two-tone background because I thought it would be fun and make the drawing or painting a little bit different. Now use that same shape tool that was up at the top and select circle. Draw your first circle. To change the color of your circle, go up to the paint bucket. That will change the inside. The pen will change the outside line. The lines next to it will change the width of the line and then you can also adjust the pattern of the outside, which we'll talk about later. Now you're probably thinking that this project stinks because you have to create a new dot each time, but actually if you watch the video, it becomes really easy. All you have to do is remember these two buttons, hold control, press C, hold control, then press V, and that's copy and paste. We'll just copy and paste a whole bunch of those lines. So what I like to do is copy and paste a whole bunch in a row and then rearrange them to where I want them to go. And then once they're out of the way, I repeat the step over and over again. When you work on this project, remember that 80% of it needs to be covered with dots. And dots also need to be placed close together to get full credit. You can fast forward a little bit if you wanted to. This is just me kind of arranging things. I sped up the video to make it go a little bit faster, so I really can't work that fast, but just to show you how I edited my project. Another thing I like about this project is you can do various sizes of dots. So here's a couple examples of me using thick dots, thin dots, but still using the copy and paste method and putting them everywhere in that particular space. One thing you will be graded on is did you use a wide variety of sizes of dots? So it's good to kind of put a couple different sizes in there, small, medium, and large. It's very important. You really just want to make sure you fill up the page. The more you fill up, the better chances your grade will be. Now I am starting to do the interior part of my flame. Uh, I started off with yellow and orange, yellow on the inside, orange on the outside. Now I'm going for an orange interior, yellow outside. You can always adjust the width of the exterior like line on the outside of the shape. And then move it into place, copy and paste, put a whole bunch out there, and then rearrange it to the way you want it to go. So the next part, I decided to use a red dot with an orange outside, and I'm copy and pasting a whole bunch of various sizes. Now one really cool thing I found with Google Drawing is you can adjust the width of the outside line and make it a little bit thicker. And then what I like to do is use the line pattern tool to create different types of patterns on the outside. That's located up at the top. If you figure out a pretty good line thickness, if you use the dotted pattern tool, it kind of looks like you're putting additional dots around each circle. 
After you select a circle, one really cool tool that you can use is if you click on Format Options located at the top of the toolbar, select it, then over on the side it will present you with a couple of options. You're more than welcome to kind of tinker with some other stuff. There are some cool things that are located there. You can adjust the angle, which just means rotating the circle to a different spot. One of the tools I like to play with the most was called Drop Shadow, and it actually puts a shadow around your circle, and you can kind of adjust the thickness, thinness, how dark it is, what color, um, and you're more than welcome to kind of have fun and mess around with this really cool tool. Keep watching and you can kind of see some of the stuff I do with it. One thing I like to do with this project is put smaller circles on top of bigger circles to kind of layer it up. I also use drop shadow. But whenever you do this, make sure that the smaller circle was like the last circle that you created. Otherwise, it's just going to go back behind the bigger circle. The next thing I did is start filling up my background. So for me, because of the bottom portion was a darker gray, I decided to use a lighter gray for that circle. And all I did was just copy and paste multiple times, adjusted the sizing just to fill up that space. Then for the top, I used a darker gray with a little bit lighter version of that gray for an outline and then I arranged them throughout the background. In those bigger spaces you are more than welcome to use a little bit bigger dots. I really do like the various dot sizes. However, do not just use only big dots to complete this task. I feel like that is just kind of cheating a little bit. And like I said before, I'm a big fan of layering up the circles and adding drop shadows to them. I understand that this isn't as cool as doing a painting, and it's not the same as a painting. However, this was the only online option that I could find that would work with Google Classroom. And this is my completed Vance Kirkland warm color scheme inspired Google drawing. Good luck with your projects. Can't wait to see the end result.